Welcome back everyone, it is Eric from Rare Candy, and today I'm back with another Scarlet and Violet deck profile, this time showing off the brand new Oinkalone EX, which I actually think is one of the more slept on EXs that is a little bit underrated coming out of this brand new set. So it's kind of like uh, decks like Blissey, where we're just trying to sort of tank hits and deny KOs with these very chonky, you know, no pun intended, uh, giant pig Pokemon that we have here in this deck today. And before we get into this list today, just a quick heads up. If you guys are thinking about picking up any Scarlet and Violet cards for yourself, friends of the channel over at FlipsideGaming.com are still taking pre-orders on sealed product. Use coupon code RAREcandy for 10% off and you'll get free shipping too. But if Flipside is out of stock by the time you find this video, you can also use my affiliate link with TCG Player. They'll show you all of the next cheapest listings online and it really does help support the channel. Links to these will be down below in the description. But let's jump in and take a look at this Oinkalone EX deck. So up first we have our four copies of LeChonk and I will point out we do actually have access to a couple of different ones and admittedly they do have better attacks than this one but the reason I am leaning toward this one is because it does have 70 HP which is pretty important against decks like Lost Box because if you're playing the 60 HP ones and you have a couple of unevolved LeChonks on your bench it is possible for Sableye to get a double KO and the 70 HP does force them to need something like a Halucha at that point if they do want to guarantee that KO. But of course, up next from there, we have the big guy himself, four copies of Oinkalone EX. Looking at this guy's attacks, the first one is the main one we're going to use for a colorless energy, does 10 plus 30 more damage for each of our opponent's benched Pokemon. So kind of like that Cleaver card that we saw some of these Zoroark Toolbox decks using. And most of the time, this is going to be a solid amount of damage, probably a nice two, sometimes three shotting number. But for the turns where we do need that extra little bit of power to guarantee a KO, we can add on a double turbo energy from there to be able to use this second attack for three colorless energy to do 210. But if we flip a coin and get tails, we can't attack on the next turn. Not being able to attack on the next turn honestly isn't even a big deal, guys, because a lot of the time when we're using this attack, we are conceding that our Oinkalone is going to go down on the next turn anyways. But like I said, this first attack is going to be our primary attack, and even though it doesn't hit for a ton of damage, we're going to be able to easily make up for that with all of the ways we can tank and deny KOs with this deck. Up next from there, we have three copies of Bidoof. This, of course, is going to be the newer one from Crown Zenith, where it has that bench protection ability built right into it and also does have a one retreat cost, which I think does make this probably the optimal Bidoof to play for the moment. But a little bit more importantly, we have our three copies of Bavarel for that industrious incisor's ability. We draw cards until we have five in hand. And really, ideally, we'd like two Bavarel in play. So that's why we have the three three line just to help ensure that that happens. Up next from there is a card I've actually really grown to like a lot, and that is going to be one copy of the brand new Squabbit. Its ability says once during your turn, you can shuffle your hand, put it at the bottom of your deck, and draw one. So I think at a glance, this ability seems pretty bad. You're basically marnying yourself down the one card. But the reason this is good is for the turns where you really need to dig for a certain card with a barrel and you have sort of a clunky hand full of cards you can't actually play down, you can use Squabbit here to put all those cards at the bottom of your deck and then more easily draw cards with your barrel. From there, we have a copy of Manaphy in the deck just to protect our bench from bench sniping attacks like Moonlight Shuriken. So even though our Bidoofs do have that bench protection built right into them, unfortunately our Lechonks do not. So what this means is if we're going against some sort of Lost Box deck, and especially if they go first, if they're threatening a turn two sniping attack with their Greninja, we need to be able to protect our Lechonks for at least a turn. And our last Pokemon of the deck is just gonna be a copy of Radiant Gardevoir, just to reduce the damage done to our Pokemon by 20 from Pokemon V. And before we get into our trainer cards, some of you guys might be wondering where Dunsparce is. That's a card I think a lot might look to initially include in this, but honestly, outside of Ston Journer, I'm not expecting a whole lot of fighting. And what I kind of found in the Lugia matchup with this deck is that even if you're preventing your weakness against things like Ston Journer, Tyranitar V can still just one shot your Oinkalones unless you have literally every damage reduction modifier the deck has into play. It didn't seem like a good matchup even with it in there. So right now I am cutting it just to have the extra space for something else. But finally getting into some of these tanking options, we have two copies of Sharon's Care. We get to pick up one of our damaged colorless Pokemon and put them back into our hand. Once our opponent attacks into Oinkalone and doesn't knock it out, we then can scoop it up and re-evolve a bench Lechonk. And one of the things I like about Sharon's Care in particular is that it does preserve our energy, unlike a card like Cheryl that does force us to discard them. But speaking of Cheryl, we do still have two copies in the deck. I still think this is a very solid card. We heal all of the damage from all of our evolution Pokemon, but we do have to discard the energy attached to them. There are going to be times where we might have our Oinkalone EX in play, but for whatever reason, we don't have another Lechonk waiting on the bench. 
So even though we do lose our energy, Cheryl is still great for these sorts of occasions because we can just heal all of our damage and then immediately slap down one more energy to be able to use that first attack on our Oink alone. Up next from there though, we have three copies of Chorus's Experiment. We look at the top five cards of our deck, we keep three and put the rest into the Lost Zone. So this might look kind of weird at a glance since we're not really using things like Mirage Gates or Kramer Ants or Compies or anything like that. But after some testing, I kind of realized that Professor's research didn't feel that great in this deck. So instead of having to research away evolutions or our healing support cards and stuff like that, Chorus allows us to hold onto our hand size and just expand it and find hopefully exactly what we need within those five cards. But our other main draw supporter of the deck is gonna be three copies of Judge for a little bit of hand disruption here. Both players shuffle their hands in and get four. And even though this draw power is, you know, kind of weak, you have to remember we do have our barrels on the bench, hopefully at least, to be able to refill our hand up and keep seeing more cards even after we've put ourselves down to a four card hand. Next up, we have a copy of Serena. We get to choose between dusting up a Pokemon V or discarding up to three cards and then drawing until we have five. As I've said in a lot of these Scarlet and Violet deck profiles, Pokemon V are still gonna be running around, so Serena definitely still worth the space. But of course, we also do have a single copy of Boss's Orders to round out our supporter cards. So we're not playing like a very high count of gusting cards, but we do play a pal pad in this list. And also a lot of our turns, we're just trying to play our tanking supporters instead anyways. And for our stadium card of choice, we have four copies of Path to the Peak, which is still a very good card against a number of different decks out there. Of course, we're gonna shut down things like Genesect V, Gardevoir EX, Maridon EX, Regi Elucky V Max, Radiant Greninja, Luminion V, and even though this does shut off our own Radiant Gardevoir, it's not even that big of a deal because if we are going against, let's say, a Mew V Max, well, their options are Dead Draw or bump our path to the peak and make our Oink Alones harder to knock out by reactivating Gardevoir. Getting into our items, we have two copies of Pokeyear just to look at the top seven cards of our deck and get a supporter card. But I really like Pokeyear because it's a card we can always just immediately play and fail if we don't want anything to be able to draw more cards with our Barrel. But also this gives us far higher ounce to the exact supporter cards that we might want in a turn. Up next from there, two copies of Escape Rope in the deck. We do have kind of a chunky retreat cost with some of our Pokemon. So having some switching outs is definitely good. I do like the added disruption that Escape Rope gives us, but regular switch I think is also very valid too. Up next, four copies of Ultra Ball in the deck, discard two cards from our hand and get any Pokemon. Self-explanatory, and the one thing that is good about Ultra Ball in this deck is, even though we don't have a whole lot of resources we really particularly want in the discard, it's still great just to lower our hand size to be able to draw more cards with the barrel. We also have three copies of Level Ball to search your deck for a Pokemon with 90 HP or less and put it into our hand. So originally I did have a high Nest Ball count in the deck just because Level Ball can't actually grab Radiant Gardevoir. But the reason I switched over to Level Ball is that I found that once we actually have a full bench, Nest Ball kind of just clogs up our hand and makes it more difficult to use Babero whenever we want to. But that being said, I am still playing two copies of Nest Ball. I do still like the card and want some additional outs to finding our Radiant Gardevoir for the matchups where it's the most useful in. Up next, we also have a copy of Pow Pad in the deck, like I already mentioned. This will get us two supporters from our discard back into our deck. So in theory, this gives us potentially six outs to healing throughout the course of a game, which is actually insane. But of course, also gives us more outs to cards like Bosses of Orders and Serena to maybe help us close out a game. And for our Pokemon tool of choice in the deck, we have three copies of Full Face Guard. Not a card we see a whole lot of, but pairs up perfectly with our Oinkalone EX because it reduces the damage done to the Pokemon it's attached to by 20 if it doesn't have an ability. But for our final tanking card, we have four copies of V-Guard Energy to reduce the damage from Pokemon V by 30. This is great because our Oinkalone only has a one attack cost, so we can actually just slap down V-Guard Energy as our energy of choice. And now this buffs Oinkalone up to effectively 290, then 310 with full face guard, and effectively 330 with our Radiant Gardevoir if we are going against Pokemon V. And really that's perfect because all of the Pokemon in the format that are gonna be able to really one-shot our Oinkalone are going to be Pokemon V. We also have three copies of Lucky Energy in the deck. Again, just provides a single colorless energy, but with this one, if our Pokemon gets attacked while it's attached to them, we draw a card. So I think you could make the argument we could play Gift Energy, but the reason I'm staying with Lucky Energy for the moment is because a lot of times we're gonna be tanking with this deck. Gift Energy only activates when something gets knocked out. 
And then from there, three copies of double turbo energy to round out our list. So of course it does provide two colorless energy with the caveat of reducing our damage by 20. The three count definitely feels pretty good. This gives us enough outs to where we can use this second attack with Oinkalone, but also cards like Babarel, Radiant Gardevoir, and even Oinkalone do have a pesky two retreat cost. So this will actually double as sort of a soft switching card but that's where I'm at right now with Oinkalone EX. And honestly, I really do like the state this list is in. Like I mentioned earlier, Dunsparce is a card you could consider, especially if Galarian Zapdos V pops up more in Lost Box decks. But unless something like that happens, probably don't need Dunsparce for the moment. I think you just take the Elder Lugia and basically just try to outlast all of the other decks you're gonna go up against. But of course, guys, I wanna hear from you down below in the comment section. What do you guys think of this Oinkalone EX deck? Are there any cards that you would change? Let me know your full thoughts down below. But of course, if you did enjoy today's content, remember to leave a like on the video. And if you're feeling maybe a little bit extra generous and want to take that support to the next level, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or pick up some merch over at rarecandytcg.com. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.